Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shweta Anand and welcome back to my channel Simplified Dentistry. In today's video, let's have a look on the keratinized epithelium of the oral mucosa. I've already made a video on the structure of the oral mucosa. So you can watch that video if you want to know in detail about the structure of the oral mucosa. This video will contain information only about the keratinized epithelium and the next video will be about the non-keratinized epithelium. So now let's move on to the keratinized epithelium. The epithelium of the oral mucosa is of stratified squamous type and it may be keratinized or non-keratinized. When keratinized, it may be either orthokeratinized or parakeratinized. So we will know about the ortho and parakeratinized later on in the video. First, let's know about the keratinized epithelium. In the keratinized oral mucosa, the epithelium consists of four layers. So the lowermost layer is the basal layer. Above that, we have the spinous layer or the prickle cell layer. Above this layer is granular cell layer. And the topmost layer is known as the corneal layer or the keratin layer. In Latin, these layers are also referred to as stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, and stratum corneum, respectively. These layers have their names from their different morphologic appearance. That is, the cells present in each of these layers have different morphologic structure. The basal layer is made up of cuboidal cells, whereas the spinous layer is made up of polygonal cells. Granular cell layer and the corneal layer both are made up of flattened cells, but the cells present in the corneal layer are devoid of almost all the organelles. A single cell which is present in the basal layer at different times become a part of the each layer. That is, the cells present in the basal layer has two options. After the mitosis, that is after the cell division, the cell can either remain in the basal layer and may undergo further division. So, for the tissue to remain in a steady state, these undifferentiated cells must remain in the basal layer so that it can form one differentiated cell for each cell that desquamates, that is, for each such cell that sheds off their layer, or it may become determined. To become determined means that the cell will be determined to move forward, that is, to move upwards towards the corneal layer. So, the determined cell can no longer divide, it can only differentiate. So, in the basal layer, after the cell division occurs, the cell migrates upwards towards the corneum layer and finally sheds off. So, during this migration, it becomes committed to a biochemical and morphologic changes. That is, during this migration of the cells, the cell undergo a lot of biochemical changes and also the morphologic changes. It changes its structures. So, this process is termed as the differentiation. So when the cell reaches the topmost layer, that is the corneal layer, it forms a keratinized squama, which is a dead cell filled with densely packed protein contained within a toughened cell membrane. So after reaching the surface, the cell is finally shed off and this process of shedding of surface epithelial cells is called desquamation. Also, the complete process of cell migration from the basal layer to the surface is called maturation and the time taken for a cell to divide and pass through the entire epithelium is termed as the turnover time or the turnover rate. The turnover time in oral mucosa is faster than skin but slower than intestinal mucosa. Also, the turnover time of non-keratinized oral epithelium is faster than that of the keratinized oral epithelium. Now let's have a look on the each layer in detail. First let's have a look on the stratum basal. 
So the stratum basal is the lowermost layer which is present near the basement membrane. This layer is made up of a single layer of cuboidal cells and the basal layer is made up of cells that synthesize DNA and undergo mitosis thus providing new cells. These cells show numerous mitotic figures in the nuclei and also these cells are protein synthesizing cells so rough endoplasmic reticulum are in abundance in these cells. So the presence of ribosomes and elements of rough surface endoplasmic reticulum indicates protein synthesizing activity. So the basal cells synthesize some of the proteins of the basal lamina and they also synthesize proteins which form the intermediate filaments of the basal cells. Also, these cells are connected to each other laterally by desmosomes and numerous microfilaments are also present which helps in the cellular contact with each other. So the important characteristic of basal cell layer is that it shows cell division and the other cell layers do not show any cell division. So the basal cell layers show some mitotic figures. Some of the spinous cells above the basal cell layer also shows the presence of mitotic figures. And this combination of basal and suprabasal cells containing the mitotic figure is called as stratum germinativum. But one thing should be kept in mind that even if the spinous layer contains the mitotic figures, it is only and only the basal cell layer that can undergo cell division. The basal cells are made up of two populations. So the one population is serrated and heavily packed with tonofilaments, which are adaptation for the attachment. Whereas the other is non-serrated and is composed of slowly cycling stem cells. These stem cells again give rise to two types of cells. So the first one is the slowly dividing cells which serve to protect the genetic information of the tissue and the other one is a large number of amplifying cells which increases the number of cells for maturation. Now the next layer is stratum spinosum. So this layer is made up of spinous cells which are irregularly polyhedral and larger than the basal cells. On the basis of light microscope, it appears that the cells are joined by intercellular bridges. Tonofibrils seem to course from cell to cell across these bridges. Electron microscope studies have shown that the intercellular bridges are desmosomes and the tonofibrils are the bundles of tonofilaments. So the tonofilament network and the desmosome appear to make up a tensile supporting system for the epithelium. Like any other layer, the cells in the spinous layer is also joined by desmosomes. But what happens is that during tissue preparation, there is shrinkage of these spinous cells. That is, these cells undergo shrinkage as a result of which the intercellular spaces become prominent and the size of cells reduces and this gives the spiny or the thorny appearance of the spinous cells. So in simple terms you can say that the spiny appearance of the cells of the spinous layer is due to the shrinkage of the cell during tissue preparation causing them to separate remaining attached only at the desmosomes as a result of which the spinous cells resemble a cockle bur or a sticker that has each spine ending at a desmosome. Of all the four layers, the spinous cells are most active in protein synthesis. These cells synthesize additional proteins that differ from those made in the basal cells. So this change indicates their biochemical commitment that is, when the cell migrates from one layer to the other layer, it undergoes some biochemical changes. Now let's have a look on the third layer which is stratum granulosum. So this layer contains flatter and wider cells and these cells are larger than the spinous cells. So this layer is named so because of the presence of the basophilic keratohyaline granules which stains blue with hematotoxylin and eosin. 
the nuclei shows signs of degeneration and pycnosis. This layer still synthesizes protein, but reports of synthesis rates at this level differ from that of the other two levels. However, as the cell approaches the stratum corneum, the rate diminishes. The tonofilaments are more dense in quantity and are often seen associated with the keratohinyl granules. In the stratum granulosum, the cell surfaces become more regular and are more closely applied to the adjacent cell surfaces. A small organelle known as Audlin body is also present in the upper spinous and the granular cell layer. It is also known as laminar granule or keratinosome or membrane coating granule. These are the laminated structure made up of glycoprotein and these are always present near the cell membrane. So these laminar granules discharge their contents into the intercellular space forming an intercellular laminar material which contributes to the permeability barrier and this barrier forms at the junction of the granular and cornified cell layer. Also, approximately at the same time during the differentiation, the inner unit of the cell membrane thickens forming the cornified cell envelope. So the Audlin bodies which are also known as keratinosome can be confused with keratinocyte. But keratinocyte is the cell which produces keratinized epithelium while the keratinosome is a specialized intracellular organelle present inside stratum granulosum cells. Now let's have a look on the topmost layer which is stratum corneum. So the stratum corneum is made up of keratinized squama which are larger and flatter than the granular cells. The thickness of stratum corneum varies at different sites in the oral cavity and is thicker than most areas of the skin. Here, all of the nuclei and other organelles such as ribosomes and mitochondria have disappeared. The layer is acidophilic that is it stains red with hematotoxylin and eosin and is histologically amorphous that is it has no definite shape or structure. The keratohyaline granules have also disappeared and ultrastructurally the cells of the cornified layers are composed of densely packed filaments developed from the tonofilaments altered and coated by the basic protein of the keratohyaline granule that is filaggrin. The keratinized stratified squamous epithelium can be either orthokeratinized or parakeratinized. So two types of keratin can be distinguished and they are orthokeratin or parakeratin. So the orthokeratin is made up of flattened cells that contain no nuclei in the corneal layer. Whereas the parakeratin is made up of flattened cells that contain few pycnotic nuclei that is shrunken nuclei. So you can remember in this way that O stands for zero. So orthokeratin contains no nuclei and P stands for pycnotic. So parakeratin contains pycnotic nuclei. Okay. Orthokeratinized epithelium has prominent granular cell layer whereas Parakeratinized epithelium has granular cell layer that cannot be appreciated clearly in light microscope. Orthokeratinized epithelium is mostly seen in hard palate and parakeratinized epithelium is mostly seen in gingiva. So this was all about the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. If you like the video then please like, share and comment down below and if you want more such contents then please subscribe to the channel Simplified Dentistry.